Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brandon Vinal. I am a gamer, music lover, and aspiring voice actor, and today we're talking about Emily Armstrong and the new Linkin Park. Why am I talking about this now? It's not brand new news. It's a couple weeks old at this point. I have done nine album reviews on this channel that I'm very proud of. Album record vinyl record reviews, I guess I should say. And to celebrate my tenth one, I'm going to do a trilogy from the Hybrid Theory 20th Anniversary Collection. And I want to talk about this now because I know there are probably going to be some people that have questions and I want just to link people this video. People, anyone who watches my vinyl reviews will have questions about my thoughts on Emily and the new Linkin Park. And I want to focus mainly on Chester and old Linkin Park when talking about the older albums. So what this video is, is it's not me trying to convince you to accept Emily, accept the new Linkin Park. You can still be totally against it if you want to be. I just want to let you guys know my stance on everything because, you know, I feel like it's important to be transparent with you guys, especially when I talk about these albums. Let's start with some general Linkin Park stuff. Choosing new band members after Chester. Chester's death was devastating. I grew up around Linkin Park's music. I wasn't like an active follower like I am with Avenged Sevenfold or the All American Rejects or I was with Eminem. But I still grew up around their hits, hearing them on the radio. I remember in middle school, Hybrid Theory and Meteora and even Minutes to Midnight did a lot for me in middle school. It was rough. You know, after those albums, I kind of stopped following them. Yeah, I knew of them, and I respected them, and I also respected Chester a whole shit ton. I respected him for his advocacy towards mental health. I respected him for being so open about his mental health. I find myself like getting into these patterns of like behavior or thought and especially when I'm like stuck up here I, I like to say that like this is like a I heard somebody say this once and it like stuck with me but this is like a bad neighborhood you know what I mean and I should not go walking alone um, and most of my problems are always problems that I cause myself you know I respected him for his talent and his unique vocals and everything he was really someone who was gone too soon the day that i found out he died i felt like time stood still for a sec and i feel like that's the same for anyone who even just knew of lincoln park so fast forward seven years 2024 lincoln park decides they want to come back and they have a tour that they're gonna do they announced that they announce a new album, a new single, and that they have a new singer. This singer in question has a very interesting past that I want to go over today because people have some issues, understandably so. There's two statements that piss me off that I see like in comments of TikTok, which by the way, I've noticed this. On YouTube, it seems that Emily is getting a lot more support, and on TikTok, she's getting a lot more hate. So it's kind of a weird situation going on. But Paramore Park, which one, I think that's just sexist, because I actually listen to Paramore, and Haley Williams does not sound anything like Emily Armstrong. So I don't know what you're going on about. That's just being sexist right there. And then Linkin Park died with Chester is kind of something that rubs me the wrong way because a band is a collection of people if we're being honest that's what a band is a band doesn't have to change their name or anything a majority of the members are still there and want to continue as with that name they should be able to do so one member of the band does not make the band there are countless bands that have changed singers over the years on top of my head we have acdc uh more recently that i haven't heard people talk about three days grace escape the fate yeah, they've changed singers. It's not something that's totally out of the question. And it's been, it has been through different circumstances. Like, I know Escape the Fate, it was Roddy Radke who founded uh, Falling in Reverse after being kicked out of Escape the Fate. The reason was because he got arrested, you know? And then another one people don't really talk about, even though this one's a lot on a lesser level because he, he wasn't making new music with them. Early 2020s, late 2010s, queen they wanted to tour and play their songs again in memory of freddie mercury and stuff and they had adam lambert uh take freddie mercury's place 
So this is by no means something that's rare. I find that saying something like Chester died with Lincoln Park died with Chester is kind of a dumb statement. Like, let's say All American Rejects, my favorite band of all time. They decide, you know what? We want to make new music, but we don't want Tyson Ritter in the band anymore. Would I listen to All American Rejects still? Yeah. I still care about the other band members like Nick Wheeler. Like, why would I abandon that band just because the vocalist decided to leave? Anyways, let's get on to why people have a problem with Emily. We'll start lightheartedly with one. This is, it's, none of this is lighthearted, but the most lighthearted we can get is one. She's not good at singing Chester's songs, which is true. I think it's true, and it's something that she definitely needs to work on if Linkin Park wants to keep playing Chester's songs. Obviously, her being a female and Chester being a male and having different vocal ranges, Emily's probably going to struggle, struggle a lot more singing Numb than she would singing The Emptiness Machine, which is one of their new singles. So I th personally think if they really want Emily to sing their old stuff if they really want to sing the old stuff she's got to have some more vocal practice and to do that and it's going to be harder and honestly I think they probably should just play the songs from from their new album coming up from zero maybe you can throw crawling or numb in there too but for the most part I think it should just be Emily songs and then number two is she's a Scientologist. This one is the one that got me on the fence at a point. I was like, oh, interesting. Scientology, if you don't know, is a horrific cult. Two notable names, Tom Cruise and John Travolta, are both Scientologists. Amongst a lot of other famous people, including Emily Armstrong. Now, her case is a bit different than John Travolta and Tom Cruise because she was born into Scientology. She is a second generation Scientologist. That doesn't give her a pass, mind you, because she grows up with these beliefs and stuff. But I do think that it is something to think about. She did not choose to be in Scientology because that being said, she did choose to stay in Scientology. But that being said, leaving Scientology is something that's very hard to do because they are sketchy and they're evil. This is an evil cult. If you try to leave Scientology, they will cut you off from anyone you've ever met in Scientology and any family members that are in Scientology. You will not be able to speak to any of them. Nothing. You'll never. They'll threaten to never let you see them again. And it's something you kind of would have to accept and do to leave Scientology. And with Emily, the problem is she grew up in Scientology, so almost everyone she knows, for the most part, are Scientologists. I've watched some YouTubers who are former Scientologists spe who speak out against Scientology say that they think that Emily Armstrong is what's called a Scientologist in good standing. Show me the evidence that Emily still supports Scientology. It's irrelevant. It's absolutely irrelevant. If she, if Emily Armstrong wasn't someone who has to do what Scientology tells her to do, and by the way, I'm being generous. I'm telling you, I believe Emily Armstrong is an actual true believing Scientologist. I'm just being generous and saying it doesn't even matter if she is. It doesn't even matter if, she, if, if she's just one of these reluctant members like my brother-in-law. It means she has to do what Scientology tells her. Emily Armstrong has to do what Scientology tells her to do, and she cannot do anything that would make Scientology mad. Even if she hasn't actually done any Scientology in years, which I genuinely believe it's actually highly possible. She has not done courses in years. She's not done auditing in years. And it doesn't matter. She doesn't advocate for it in anything, which is something I'm glad about. There are some things that make me believe this is me putting a tinfoil hat on real quick. I do believe she's trying to be pushed out of Scientology or maybe she's just trying to leave. 
One reason is because she's come out as gay. Now, I'm not saying that she did that just because she's a sci she wants to get out of Scientology. I think she was just ready to come out when she was ready to come out, and she just came out as gay. That's a big no-no in Scientology. However, I've heard from these ex-Scientologist YouTubers that they might have been a little bit more lax on that in more recent years, but I don't know. Even, like, the fact that she's even joining Linkin Park, which is a band that advocates for mental health, her joining that when Scientology doesn't really totally believe in that is kind of a what thing? Like, on one hand, it's like Scientologists are probably seeing dollar signs, right? Because they're probably going to get some money from out of this. But on the other hand, it's just kind of, I don't think they're thinking about why, why, are, why is our Scientologist singing about mental health when that's not a thing? Honestly, for me, as long as she's not making music about, like, pushing Scientology or she's advocating for it or anything like that, I think that I'm fine with her being a Scientologist. It does ruin a little bit of the spark that Chester had with Linkin Park because some people, because of the Scientology thing, could see her as the anti-Chester, which I get, but... You know, I'm willing to give her the benefit of the doubt because just because she was born into Scientology does not make her a monster. And she seems, from what I've seen, a very nice person. Now let's talk about the thing that kind of questions that, and that is being in support of Danny Masterson. Now, she actually cleared this up in an Instagram post. In case you're wondering about the Danny Masterson's case, in case you forgot, Danny Masterson played is most known, at least, for playing Hyde in that 70s show, which is a show I love, and I cannot look at Hyde the same way ever again. He is also a Scientologist, and he has been found guilty of being a grapist. That's the YouTube safe way. I hate saying it like that, but it is what it is. Don't get me, algorithm. And she was at one of the early hearings in the Masterson case. Now, she has addressed this, and a lot of people had problems with it, but I'll explain why I don't. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm new to so many of you, and I want to clear the air about something that happened a while back. Several years ago, I was asked to support someone I considered a friend at a court appearance, and went to one early hearing as an observer. Soon after, I realized I shouldn't have. I always try to see the good in people, and I misjudged him. I have never spoken with him since unimaginable details emerged and he was later found guilty to say it as clearly as possible i do not condone abuse or violence against women and i empathize with the victims of these crimes okay so these are the problems people have with it then i'll tell you just one rebuttal that i need to say that equals to both of them one the fact that she's very vague and says several years ago when the danny masterson case was only one to two years ago and she doesn't even mention that it was Danny Masterson and it comes down to one thing and that is I think she is afraid of what Scientology will do to her Scientology is really known to threaten people who are famous and decide to speak out against Scientology which is why I think she's afraid to even speak on that issue and why she hasn't even addressed the fact that she's in Scientology and stuff like that like she's obviously afraid because they'll do horrific things there's allegedly allegedly a place called the hole which allegedly also her mom was thrown into the hole is a fucked up place it's like jail for scientologists and i don't even understand why it's a thing and who knows what else would happen if she spoke out against it i will say though I do think if she does, not only will it give her even more balls than she has to fill in for Chester Bennington, it might turn the tables on how people think of her if she becomes an advocate against Scientology. I don't expect that to happen, at least anytime soon. But, you know, it's just something that I hope she thinks about a little bit. All in all, to quote Rafiki from The Lion King, it doesn't matter, it's in the past. So this is my final thoughts on Linkin Park. I think they should keep going. I think that with Emily, they have a thing going. I feel like people will eventually grow to like Emily or at least accept her. And to those who are like, Linkin Park died with Chester, Chester Bennington. I think you need to look in the mirror and ask yourself, were you a Lincoln, are you a Linkin Park fan or were you just always a Chester Bennington fan?
I'm in support of it. The only thing that'll get me out of it is if she, if they start making pro Scientology songs or she starts acting crazy about this whole Scientology thing. But all I know right now, they're making good music. They seem to be happy. And I don't know. I feel like Chester would be proud in some ways, but in some ways also be kind of disappointed if he was still around. Now, I expect the comments on this video to be very messy, but please be respectful for each other as much as you can on people's opinions. Let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts on the new Lincoln Park is. And yeah, I'm going to go into my hybrid theory reviews and, and older Lincoln Park ones, probably not even addressing Emily because I just don't want to spend part of the review just focusing on the new Lincoln Park when we're talking about the old stuff. But uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell when you do. And uh, yeah, so long and good night. Uh, change is good. Yeah, but it's not easy. I know what I have to do, but going back means I'll have to face my past. I've been running from it for so long. Ow! Jeez, what was that for? It doesn't matter. It's in the past. <laughs> yeah, but it still hurts. Oh, yes, the past can hurt. But the way I see it, you can either run from it or learn from it. Ah, you see?